welcome to Child Care Resources and Girls uh, Provider Appreciation Day event. We're going to begin shortly. We're just allowing everyone to come on in. And while we wait, I just wanted to say a couple things. Um, so hi, once again, welcome. Um, we're gonna get started momentarily. And while we wait for those fellow participants, we're just gonna touch on a few items. Uh, first and foremost, thank you so much for coming tonight. We look so forward to these events and connecting with you. Our event this evening will be recorded. So if you wanna rewatch this or if you'd like to share it out, please know that it will be on our website and you can feel free to share this out. As our childcare world keeps moving and keeps moving forward with us, we want you to always feel that you're supported. So we want you to make sure that you direct your questions to your local childcare consultants. Don't hesitate to visit our website, iowacccrr.org. That's spelled out I-O-W-A-C-C-R-R.org. Um, here we have a plethora of information and resources to aid you and help you with your child care program. Some special pieces that are happening right now that you may be interested in checking out is the announcement of investing in Iowa child care funding. CCRNR is proud to work with the Department of Human Services with this effort. Um, don't hesitate to look on our website for that information. And then, of course, contact your local child care consultant for more information. If you haven't attended one of our Communities of Practice peer-to-peer -peer meetings, uh, you can find that on our Communities of Practice webpage. It can help you find a local meeting. These um, meetings are engaging and informative, and they're put together for allowance of networking and discussion and more. Um, all those attendees that, it, that are there at those meetings, their focus on, is on Iowa child care and the child care world. Um, so we now have those available virtually, and so we can return face to face. And lastly, if you have any questions in partic particular, excuse me, we're here to support you. Um, once again, go to our website and we have a list of all of our local CCRNR staff in your area that are ready to assist you when you need our support. So I can now see that we have many more viewers with us tonight. So I believe let's get started. Um, once again, good evening. Um, hi, my name is Esther. I'm from Child Care Resource and Referral here in Northeast Iowa. Um, how are you all doing tonight? Uh, it's it's pretty incredible to think just a year ago this that was our first provider appreciation event um, and when we were really thinking about this event tonight uh, there was a lot of words and ideas that came to our mind and one that really just stuck up to me was just wow um, I speak tonight to you all and I can say this with confidence that there's just a lot of pride that beams from one corner of our state to the other in all the work that you've done um, we're pretty amazed at what you've accomplished this past year. So I just really couldn't think of anything better than, wow. Um, CCRNR has been reflecting a lot over this past year and what we kind of wanted to put together for this evening and then to highlight for tomorrow. And of course, we want to have those pieces of thanks and appreciation. And we wanted to have something exciting and positive. But we also understand that those feelings weren't always our truths, especially here in 2020 and times weren't always easy. We want you to understand that at CCRNR, uh, we see your work and we're so proud of you. Um, each and every day we see you, we talk to you, we hear you. And we do know this as a truth that hundreds of thousands of our state citizens and our leaders, they see your work too. That's why the topic and the conversation of childcare, it's not going anywhere. You all showed our state and our nation actually, that when a tragedy strikes like a pandemic, you weren't going anywhere. Your love and devotion and care and education to our Iowa children was unmoved. When tragedy struck, you all stepped up to the plate and you stayed open for each and every child and family as much as you could. We saw it. And the words of thanks and appreciation could only just touch this feeling that we hold very deep for you of respect and amazement. You were and always will be essential. Please know that tonight we seek to honor you. We know that this hard work that you've done this past year and many years previously was not with ease. We know that to keep your doors open, they couldn't stay in that position without hardship and tears. We know and we heard you speak to how many times this past year, it was horrific while at the same time, you could still find some joys. Where CCRNR wants to always bring you excitement and positivity, tonight we wanna to also bring truth to the conversation. Tonight, we want to be real for you and for you to understand that we see you and we saw what you've been through this past year. 
Tonight, we have a special guest speaker with us that we hope to speak to all of these truths. And tomorrow, I really hope that you feel united, that there are hundreds of childcare professionals, excuse me, like you, that may just feel exactly like you do in this moment. We are a community and together, and tonight, we seek to honor you. So let me introduce our guest speaker that we are very excited to have this evening. Kelly Matthews, a Harvest Educators Collaborative member and owner of A Place for You Early Childhood Consulting in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, always joyfully explores engaging learning, excuse me, engaging learning with people of all ages. And for over the past 20 years, she has worked in both centers and home-based care, as well as she's been a director, nanny, and a mentor teacher. Her passion is to bring relevant, thought-provoking professional development to our educators and caregivers around our country. And she's more interested in this learning with educators rather than just telling them. She's earned her MA in human development at Pacific Oaks College with a dual specialization in early childhood education and leadership in education and human services. She's exceptionally proud of this learning and grounded in social justice and meaningful contextualized practice. So welcome Kelly and thank you so much for being with us this evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, that was a powerful, powerful introduction. Um, thank you for starting the night off with a truth. It has been a hard year and it's been a good year. Um, I see lots of folks dropping stuff in the chat and I'm gonna tell you that I'm gonna need you to make one adjustment if you haven't done so already. Right above where you type your message, you're gonna see a note that says either all panelists or if you click on it, it will show you all panelists and attendees. We want the all panelists and attendees so that you can all see each other's messages together. That's gonna to be a really important part of our evening today. So if you wanna take a check, a second to set that, there we go. I'm seeing them showing up of all panelists and attendees. Thank you, Jackie, Kim, I see you, beautiful. Dolores, welcome back. Good to see you. Sandy Langenberg, I'm glad to see you here. All right, you guys are doing it. I see them flying in. Thank you so much. So normally when I present, I see lots of faces and I get to see the energy in the room. And in a webinar format, I don't get that. And so we're going to depend on that chat box for uh, being our sort of lifeline tonight. Um, what Esther didn't say is that my heart is with Iowa. I spent 10 years living there. I was a child net instructor. Some of my most important caregiving years happened in Iowa um, at a Head Start program that was English, Arabic, and Spanish, and in a family child care program that I opened there. Um, I have some longstanding relationships in Iowa, and it really is my home away from home. So you have been on my heart and mind all year uh, including the terrible show that came through. Um, I've been worried about y'all and I know you're resilient and strong people and I saw you handle it. So we're gonna share this idea of um, our stories tonight and the power of our stories. So I'm gonna share my screen and I see some folks saying this stuff could have ruined us, but we're still here. Yes, you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I was asked tonight to help hold the real lives of childcare providers after a year of COVID. Um, when this all started, I don't know that we knew that it was going to take over a year and still be in it. The fact that we have survived and our caring for children in a worldwide pandemic is no small task. But I also want to say it's not the only story. And so the theme of our night tonight is going to think about the danger of a single story. We have so many stories from this last year. Some would break your heart, others would have you sing from the mountaintops. Our brains love seeing patterns and to organize those patterns into meanings. But it's good every now and again to step back and see what stories we are telling ourselves about our own selves and the stories others may be telling themselves about us. 
right? We need to be mindful of those stories. Um, stories have power, and there's research that actually shows that the stories we tell ourselves about our past actually influence the ease in which we move through the future. And I think that's really compelling research. As we tell our stories to ourselves, we have a caution, the danger of a single story. Chimamba, sorry, Chimamanda Adichie warns that we risk a critical misunderstanding when we only know a single story about someone. This is a image from her TED talk. It came out in July of 2009, which feels like a century ago. I still think about this video regularly. I watched it and I couldn't see my life and my interactions and my relationships the same after I watched it. And I think this video has something to tell us about the story of childcare. I'm gonna take her title, The Danger of a Single Story, and use that to think about our work and what this last year has felt like. During COVID, we have heard other people, I'm sorry, during COVID, we've heard other stories too, about our work, about our status as being essential, people deciding what resources we needed and what we didn't, and sort of childcare at large. Some of these stories we've been hearing for a long time. I wish I could stay home and play all day. I bet you can't wait until you're a real teacher. You don't need real skills to do that job. Anyone can do that. And the world sort of stopped and crashed when childcare paused and had to take a breath to figure out what comes next when COVID happened, right? We had to figure it out on a dime uh, in March. One day, all of a sudden the world was open and the next day our country acknowledged we were in a worldwide pandemic and things shut down. We didn't shut down. Our care didn't necessarily shut down. Our relationships and our support systems didn't necessarily shut down, but we had to figure out what our truth was going to be. There's another one that we sometimes hear, and this is, I will put in air quotes, one of my <coughs> favorites. Teachers don't teach for the income, they do it for the outcome, right? We've heard this. Here's the deal. If someone really wants to thank early educators for their hard work, we need to be paid a fair wage period, right? That is part of our story as early educators. We have a broken funding system that doesn't fully support us for the work that we do and the economic um, development that we provide for the entire state of Iowa. Uh, we also often talk about childcare being the workforce behind the workforce, and that's really true. Nothing happens without childcare. And I'm seeing a ton of messages coming in about benefits. Absolutely, right? We need to figure out a way to truly support childcare. There is always more than one story to tell. We've had these stories of whether childcare is essential, whether it's a job anybody can do, whether we need it, whether it's, you know, just, I'll use the B word, babysitting. Um, but we know that we have many truths that we've lived this last year. There is never just a single story. Sometimes we might feel like we live in an either or world. This year was terrible. COVID was the worst. Others might say, while it was hard, it brought joys and togetherness that otherwise never would have been possible. You may have had a terrible heartbreak and grief and mourning for the year that wasn't. And at the same time, you might have felt really proud of yourself. You might have felt resilient. You might have felt important in your community for the work you did, how you kept yourself together, 
how you manage to get dressed or eat a real meal. Here's the thing. These can all be true at the same time. Our brains have been trained to live in an either or. But my friend Kitty reminds me powerful, and yes, those are her arms with real tattoos on them, that we can resist the either or and live in the fullness of both and. And I think this year with COVID has really taught us that more things can be true at once than maybe we thought possible. So we're gonna open up the chat and it's been flying right now, just in case you haven't been seeing it all, right? I think I hit a nerve with that notion of um, benefits and support being something that needs to be part of our story, right? That professionals have the support they need to do their work and that that is an element that right now is missing from our story. So I'm just gonna hold that up as part of our truth right now. We're gonna have some chat stories about your COVID year. I'm gonna invite you to share your stories of how this last year has affected you, what joy you have found or made, what hard things you might have grieved, where you never gave up, or maybe when you had to rest. These can be just short snippets. I held a newborn. My kid graduated. I struggled with anxiety and doom scrolled on my phone for hours. Yep, maybe that was me this last year. I'll admit it. I had moments like that. Maybe I felt lonely, even while surrounded with kids. Whatever is true for you, and I know, and we know, these aren't your only stories. You have more than one for sure. But tonight, I invite you to share the one that feels most important to be honest about. I will read them off as they come in because I think it's important to give voice and life to the details we live this year. So someone had two kids graduate. Uh, somebody worked at a different childcare program to keep their home safe. Kids homeschooled in four different places. I didn't lose any loved ones. Sometimes I would break down crying. The cleaning and sanitizing was insane. We got a foster child and we'll be adopting soon. Using TikTok as a distraction. A daughter getting married safely in August. It's been insane. Anxiety of over uh, virtual learning with older kids. Somebody purchased their first home. Changes with the policies that were really hard. Premature twins. Big moments that were minimized, even though people still found a way to celebrate. Someone lost a brother. Someone hurt, hit their first home run. Helping others when programs closed. Learning ideas to, for all ages. Some of that had to close two weeks because they themselves had COVID. Somebody finished their bachelor's degree. Someone started a new business. Feeling all alone, but knowing they're still blessed. Missing grandchildren. A PPP loan that came through. A, re a son that got remarried after a reschedule. A program that had to close because they contracted COVID. A first niece. Adding school programming to their home program anxiety, money to spend on childcare through DHS, struggling with depression, enrollment being lost drastically, a new granddaughter, a baby right when everything shut down for COVID, so only my husband could be with me and not my daughter. So many Zoom classes, thank you, Sherry. Adjusting to new routines when change is hard, not having a single positive COVID test within the entire childcare program or family. Personally needing to shut down for three months because of personal health concerns. Homeschooling, having to close. Grants for cleaning items, which were much appreciated. Uh, folks staying open when schools were closed. People staying healthy, feeling like someone is starting to fill up again. Missing connection and togetherness. 
fought breast cancer and won. CCRNR and DHS keeping us alive. Trying to get back and it's, they're coming in fast and furious and I don't want to miss all of them, but I know I can't read them as fast as they come in. Uh, let's see here. Husband and the provider got COVID at the same time. Let's see what else here. I didn't have to ever shut down, felt great support from DHS and CCRNR, got to spend a week with my daughter to help when she had a new baby and lots of positives, but had some struggles, lost my father-in-law and brother-in-law fighting COVID related issues from being immune compromised. Let's see what else. Before COVID, I was down to two full-time kids and two part-time. When COVID hit, I filled immediately. Since then, I was able to get caught up on bills, purchase an SUV that could transport the kids, and just this year, I purchased a camper. We were able to get a lot of home improvements done. DHS help uh, would have been absolutely lost without CCRNR and DHS. They were truly there for us. I moved to a different town and struggled. Keep them coming. Birthday parties, missing birthday parties and missing the love. Did not care for the online world and had a grandbaby join. A lost mom. I love this amazing pot of stories, of joy, of pain, of gratitude, of struggle. It's real. This is the real lived life of childcare providers after a year of COVID. And you are all here and you made it. And you're here to celebrate together and to be celebrated. I appreciate, yes, people are yelling happy birthday to each other. I uh, love that we be, seem to be on the same page of this past year. We do rock. Yes, you do. Absolutely. Understanding parents, lots of kids' parents working from home. More thanks for the CCRNRs. Blessed that a family never got COVID. I love these happy birthday uh, wishes that are flying around. I loved how CCR was so ready to help us with any needs we had. Right, we weren't the only one that had to pivot during this time. Our support agencies had to as well. Those stories, like I didn't expect necessarily to be moved to tears by a chat box. And yet here I am with tears in my eyes. I'm thinking about these new grandbabies. I'm thinking about the grief. I'm thinking about the financial hardship. I'm thinking about the ways that you all held on. Thank you for your honesty. Your real hearts. I asked the people who brought me here, what would be real from them in tonight's offering? And this slide was their reply. You have support. They wanted you to know that while often we may see the CCRNR as a place that helps us do better in supporting our children and families that we serve, the CCRNR staff wanted very clearly for you to know that they are here to support you as well. You don't always have to be focused on the support of others. The other story tonight is you deserve and need to be cared for. You need and deserve to be supported in your own right. And I see that the chat box still flying of people actually supporting each other. Congrats on a five star. My daughter says, thank you for the birthday wishes. Like this warm connection of you all being across the state and yet finding this way to celebrate and be together, I think is remarkable. I'm so pleased to be part of this event and to hold the space for you to get to tell your real stories. 
there were hard stories that came across that chat box. There were beautiful stories. People fell in love, people got married, babies were born, right? Our care went on. We did it. We're here. When I was asked to do this presentation, it was a deep honor, but I will tell you, it was also a challenge. I was told make a space that can hold all the hard stuff that was real and impacted our providers. And also help us hold on to a space for joy, love, and resilience. We can all live in the both and. Yes, this year was hard. I don't ever want to do it again. I didn't get to hug my dad for over a year. And that broke my heart. Right? Some of you didn't get to see loved ones. And some loved ones aren't going to come back. And yet here we are together, holding each other, supporting each other being with each other, living in the hard spaces, and living in the joy. So as we move from tonight back into our work, I offer you this takeaway. This question helps remind us there is always another side, a different view, another story we can tell ourselves in deep recognition of who we are. So, what else is also true? While this has been a hard year, what else has been true for you? What has been real? What has grounded you? I see you, Kim. This quote is one that I hang on to. This quote I read and couldn't be the same again after. For a seed to achieve its greatest expression, it must come completely undone. The shell cracks, its insides come out, and everything changes. To someone who doesn't understand growth, it would look like complete destruction. This year has been a year of cracking for many. Many have come undone. We've weathered some destruction. Who had a derecho in their 2020 bingo card? Who knew, right? And here we are. But I will invite you to remember that you have grown some way this year. You have bloomed some way this year. You have put down roots in some way this year. And there is always, always, always space in our hearts and our minds and our relationships for all of these stories. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for still involving me in the community of providers. You are my heart of hearts. Um, the work you do, and I've done it, I know what it means. I know what it means to show up day after day for families and to give everything you have and be exhausted by day's end and get up and do it again tomorrow. As Esther said this morning, or this, at the introduction of this, we see you. We see your hard work. We see your dedication. We see your joy. We see the hardships. Please reach out. Please do not ever feel like you are alone. Even as we unwind from COVID and figure out what comes next, you still deserve to be supported and cared for, like that new seedling. This is my contact information. And I give it to every presenter, every presentation I do. That is my real phone number. It will show up on my phone in my hand right now if you text. I am a Facebook junkie. Some of you knew that tonight was happening because you saw an invite on Facebook to be here tonight. I want to be connected 
to support you. You don't ever have to do this alone. You don't ever have to be frustrated and have someone that won't understand what you're going through. I'm here for you. The providers of the CCRNR services are here for you. And they have a whole other network of people that are here that they can connect with to help support you. So I'm gonna stop sharing my slides, but please keep filling up the chat box with the stories that you wanna tell about what this year meant to you, um, the stories and the honesty that you need to tell to make sure that you're heard tonight. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being honest and telling your stories. Thank you for the work you do every single day. I'm so proud of you. Good night. Thank you so much, Kelly, for that wonderful message and presentation that you gave to our Iowa child care providers tonight. As I was listening in, I was trying to think about the parts that resonated with me the most, and it was really all of it. I mean, uh, those statements, the beginning and the quote at the end, that seeds truly do need to come apart to grow. And I think that's what happened to a lot of our child care providers this last year. And those statements, you know, I wish I could stay at home all day, or I bet you wish you were a real teacher. And those are things that I really experienced as well when I provided childcare. So my hope tonight is that this tough year really shines a light on the absolutely incredible, difficult, rewarding, and beautiful pro profession that you have chosen. You do make a difference. So we want to give a very, very special thank you to Kelly Matthews for being on with us tonight. Such an up uplifting and amazing presentation to celebrate our child care providers. And now we have a few words from CCR and our staff. I'm so thankful for my providers. You have been amazing this past year, keeping our children healthy, happy, and well cared for throughout all of the changes that have happened. Remember that CCRNR is here for any of your questions or if you just want to talk. Thanks again for all that you do. my greatest appreciation to all the child care providers out there. The hard work that you do to care for children and families in our community each day is so appreciated. We thank you again. I know sometimes you can feel like this when you work with children inside, outside, and upside down, and sometimes all at once. But we know that you're doing a tremendous job day in and day out for all the children and families in your community. I'm Terry Orr with Child Care Resource Referral out of the Decor Office, and I want to say thank you for all the work that you do every day. We appreciate you. providers. I want to express my gratitude for you today. This past year, it's been challenging. Thank you, our essential workers, for creating and maintaining that stable, clean, and safe learning environment. You work tirelessly, and your efforts sometimes go unnoticed, but you are appreciated. Happy Child Care Provider Appreciation Day. Provider 
appreciation. Jay. Thanks for all the wonderful things you do for families and children from the parent services team. We love the opportunity to appreciate and recognize your service to children and families in Iowa. So we are very excited to offer incentive door prizes to 30 lucky attendees tonight. These incentives are from Lakeshore and Kaplan and 30 names were randomly picked during our presentation tonight. I'm going to read the first and the last names of the winners now. And if you win, you will receive an email tomorrow from our statewide communication specialist with details on how to receive your incentive prize. Please be sure to check the email that you use to register for this event. That's the email that we'll send the um, details to. So the winners are, I'll do my best to pronounce the names correctly. <laughs> Allison Crawford, Angela Hopkins, Angela Dobbs, Danette Node, Darla Johnson, Dolores Chapin, Hazel Hoke, Janice Gilbert, Jenny Ort, Jennifer Hopman, Jennifer Conover, Carrie Johnson Markla, Kimberly Smith, Megan Vallon, Natalie Hopner, Nicole Dries, Raven Walker, Samantha Larkin, Sherry Schwery, Stephanie Laddig, Sherry Showers, Rebecca Huisman, Margie Messler, Chris Gross, Jenna Johnson, Jade Bedell, Autumn Vogel, Ashley Clark. Those are the winners for tonight. So congratulations if you won a door prize. Um, we appreciate you and we appreciate you all being on to celebrate with us tonight. All right, thank you so much, Julie, for those. And again, Kelly, thank you so much for your impactful words and opening and making this a safe space for all of us to share these truths. We wanna thank you all for attending this evening and speaking your truth. And again, this has been recorded if you want to go on the website for future use or viewing. Um, I want to give a big thank you and shout out as well to our child care resource and referral staff across our state for making this evening and so many of our other evenings possible. And to all of our child care providers who attended this evening and who are watching this in the future, thank you. Child care resource and referral appreciates all that you do and we see you. Tomorrow we hope that you celebrate yourself and applaud the work that you do day in and day out. But together we will appreciate our child care providers. That's you. Good night, everyone.